fellow babies. Welcome back to the Pactor Factor on sifted.net. Uh, if you are a Patreon patron and watching it real time, thanks very much for being a member. If you are watching on YouTube, you're getting it a week late, which is cool. Uh, I get it if you don't have the funds or the inclination to support us on Patreon, but I would like to ask you, please, if you are an Amazon Prime member, it's pretty easy to link your Twitch Prime account to your Amazon Prime account. And Amazon, for whatever odd reason, will pay us $2.50 a month for each month that you re-up that. Uh, the instructions are below. It's pretty easy. It's included in the description of the show. Um, so please try to link your accounts. Again, it'll take you about a minute the first time and about three seconds to re-up every, every time thereafter. Every month that you re-up, we get $2.50, so you keep us alive. And that's about the cost of just a sifted subscription to, to uh, Pactor Factor. So again, Amazon's going to pay it for it. Appreciate it if you can do that. Our first question from Patreon from Sleepy Droid. Now that the dust has settled on E3 2019, in hindsight, did Sony make the right move not being at the show? Um, they did not make the right move. Um, interestingly, uh, Jim Ryan, who is the new president of PlayStation, was the president of Sony Europe, um, Sony Computer Entertainment Europe, I think they call it something now, Sony Interactive Entertainment Europe. Um, Jim, Jim is the, the CEO, he was at E3, he came to my E3 party and you know I, I saw him, I mean I don't think he was there very long, and I don't think he stayed very long, mostly because I think he had plenty of meetings and was getting business done, which is great. And uh, they were there. They were there and they were doing business. I saw Phil Rosenberg, who is a pretty high up guy uh, in PlayStation in the US. Uh, so they were there. Uh, they weren't there in a PR sense. They certainly weren't there in a booth presence. And, you know, right move. There's something called cost benefit analysis. And so I'm going to question Sony's thinking on this and strategy on this. And by the way, I had breakfast with five or six. Sony Interactive Entertainment strategy people. Um, so again, these guys clearly were there um, you know, at E3. Um, I think the cost is high. It's probably you know, 10 million bucks for Sony to, to be at the show. Maybe 20, maybe 30, I don't know, a lot. A booth is at least a couple million bucks. And then obviously you've got all those people. Yeah, you've got all the people to bring in. I mean, so probably 20, 30 million bucks. The benefit is that the entire world is watching E3, and there is a large group of people out there, I call them Sony fanboys, but they're out there, who love everything about Sony and can't get enough Sony and just want to hear more about Sony, and Sony missed the opportunity to reach those people. Um, we can argue about whether a Sony Direct would be just as effective. I don't think so. E3, everybody knows about, everybody's tuned in that week. You know, so I think Sony blew it by not being there. I would say Nintendo has blown it by not having a press conference and doing Nintendo Directs. There's no reason to, to do only Nintendo Direct. Why not do both? And yet, you know, if you went to the Nintendo booth, it was jam-packed. I mean, if you watch the Pactor Factor from the E3 floor, we had the Nintendo booth in the background, completely full. So I think Nintendo really at least understands they gotta be there and they, they really were there in force and fans love it. So I think Sony blew it badly. I continue to think Sony blew it badly. Um, we can you know roll back and say maybe they just didn't plan properly. They didn't have enough software coming out this year or the stuff that did come out this year like Days Gone came out earlier. But truthfully, I think you know it would have been a great time to do what Microsoft did, announce you know, the PS5 instead of putting the specs out a month prior, you know, show the specs, show the games like Microsoft did, you know, we've got Halo coming for next gen, Sony should have said Last of Us Part 4 or whatever it's called, you know, Part 3, 2 is coming out for the next gen PlayStation. Um, name the next gen PlayStation, do something just to capture people's imagination. I think they really blew it. So to answer your question, they did not make the right move not being there. It's a double negative. They made the wrong move not being there. Okay, our next uh, question comes from YouTube from Satya DG. What do you think about the upcoming Avengers game from Crystal Dynamics? It got a lukewarm reception at E3. Do you think it's essential to have the actors' likenesses in the game? 
You know, I don't think much about it. Um, you know, Crystal Dynamics is is pretty well known for the Lara Craft Craft Lara Croft franchise, and I don't really think of them as doing licensed properties. I think licensed IP is hard to do. Licensed IP without the actor's likeness is especially hard to do, hard to do. There was a game back in 02, 03, something like that, uh, called Minority Report. And it was time to come out when the movie with Tom Cruise came out. That movie was based on a Philip K. Dick book. He also wrote uh, Blade Runner. So he, he's a, he's a do androids dream of electric sheep. So he's a pretty famous um, science fiction author. And the movie wasn't very good, but, but the point was the game came out and Tom Cruise didn't license his likeness. So the main character in the game had blonde hair because he wasn't allowed to even have brown hair like Tom Cruise. And the game was a complete flop. Um, let's you know, flip the other way around. We're at E3 and we find out Ghost Recon has John Bernthal. If you don't know who he is, he plays the Punisher on the Netflix show. He's, he was in season one or one or two of Walking Dead. Um, he's a pretty accomplished, you know, kind of rough and tumble actor. And obviously Cyberpunk 77 has Keanu Reeves likeness. And I think those are massive selling points for those games, um, especially Cyberpunk. You know, Ghost Recon, military shooter, John Bernthal, tough guy, looks military, you know, has a jarhead kind of look, and Punisher is an ex-military guy. Um, Keanu, obviously John Wick, you know, Matrix, very good at, you know, martial arts and killing people and cyberpunk just fits perfectly with his persona. So, yeah, I think you want, you know, Robert Downey and Chris Evans and uh, Chris Hemsworth, you know, you want all the Avengers in the Avengers game. I don't think Crystal Dynamics is good at pulling off, you know, using other people's content. I think they're very creative and they can do their own content. Um, I don't expect the game to be big and I think it got a lukewarm reception because as you pointed out, uh, consumers want recognizable characters in the game. We think of Iron Man and Tony Stark as Robert Downey and we want to see Robert Downey as that character and if it's not that guy, it doesn't look right to us. So good, good question and I think it matters. Our next question from YouTube from Levy. Do you think the inclusion of Microsoft-owned Banjo-Kazooie in Smash Brothers is a sign of things to come between Microsoft and Nintendo? Do you think the industry is shifting to be more conducive to this sort of collaboration? How far will it go? You know, I think this is more on Nintendo than Microsoft. I think that Nintendo, until they got uh, their new CEO, Furukawa, was a much more insular company. Um, I think they looked only inward for inspiration and I think that it was really difficult for them to collaborate and when they did it was more like you know Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games or something it would be another Japanese studio and even if you look in Smash Brothers you know you've got um, you've got mostly Japanese IP in there but you're I think this is a big deal and I think that Microsoft probably has always been interested in cross-promoting its brands and doing, and again, not that they do much with Banjo-Kazooie, but I think they've always been interested in, in, you know, I think they were early in allowing cross-platform play on Fortnite, for example, and uh, Sony was resistant. You know, so I think the Japanese way is insular and, you know, kind of look, look at only your own resources, and I think the American way is collaborative. So, you know, again, I'm not trying to slam an entire culture, but, but I think the American business way is collaborative and I think the Japanese business way is insular. So I think this really speaks volumes about uh, Nintendo's willingness and interest in working with, with other companies. I think that's Furukawa. I think he's a next generation type leader. He's young and, you know, young 42 or 3 or something. Uh, but I think that that makes a big difference. He's a new generation. And, you know, you're seeing this also with Sony's collaboration with Microsoft on cloud, uh, Yoshida and Satya Nadella talking. Again, Microsoft wants to be the cloud provider for every company. And you know, Sony being willing to, you know, to at least sign a letter of intent with, with Microsoft speaks volumes about the new leadership of Japanese companies. So yes, I think this is a sign of things to come. I think it's going to, I just knocked the microphone. I think it's gonna um, move the needle for companies like Nintendo if they're much, much more open to you know, featuring other companies' IP in their, in their games. And ultimately, I hope 
it's a step toward Nintendo moving its games you know, to the cloud and not worrying about whether you buy a console because the, and I'm, I'll spend an episode on this, but the, um, the world is moving away from console and ultimately we just don't need a console to play games and so rather than Nintendo staying fixated on, on consoles, I think Nintendo should be fixated on its IP and how to sell as much of that as they can. If they can't sell consoles in the future, then they still are a really valuable company. So I think it's important that they incorporate, you know, any kind of hook to get you to play their games. And Banjo Kazooie is a very, is a very, I'm screwing up with the wires here. Banjo Kazooie is a really tiny hook, but it's it's a hook. Um, Sifted. Our next question. Sifted. Dennis one seven eight two one. I have no idea. That's got to be his password on Gmail. So find Dennis on <laughs> Gmail. Um, with Keanu Reeves being such a successful reveal for Cyberpunk 2077, what actor would you like to see in a video game? Who do you think paid for his appearance? CG, CD Projekt Red or Microsoft? Love the show, keep it going. Thank you for loving the show. Who would I like to see in a video game? You know, there's actors that I just love and there's actors I just hate. So, you know, it depends, I suppose. I mean, if, if we could see an actor I hate in a game getting crushed and destroyed and dying a billion painful deaths, you know, then I would say like, I don't know, Kevin Sorbo, you know, whatever. <laughs> J James Woods, you know, guys that are just like bad. I don't like them. I don't like them personally, John Voight. You know, so I'd like to see those guys just die a million deaths and be painful, but I don't want them to die in real life. Like I would never want anything bad to happen to anybody. But those guys, it would be fun to be on the other side and just like, you know, play, put, put them in Mortal Kombat so I could do the, you know, the fatality move on those guys. Um, but if it's actors that, you know, like, God, who do we like? I like everybody. I think I like, I love um, Wonder Woman. I love uh, Gal Gadot, Go, Gal Gadot, Gadot, right. Gal Gadot. She's a babe, she's great, she's a compelling actress, she's fit, she's just, I like everything about her. She just seems like she's smart and together, I love her. Um, I like action action movie people, like, ah. Uh, God, I love Keanu Reeves. Um, I, you know, I love Robert Downey. I love Chris Evans. I love Chris Hemsworth. Um, you know, God, there's so many actors that are so great. I mean, who's my favorite actor? You know, Kenneth Branagh, but I don't think he'd be good in a video game. Um, I mean, there's a lot of them. You know, I love Denzel. Denzel would be great in a video game as a good guy or a bad guy. What a great actor. Like, I love that guy. Um, I can't even think who won Best Actor in the last year, year or two. Who won, who won Best I Actor? Mean, chances are. Oh, it was uh, it was the guy from Freddie Mercury. It was uh, oh, yeah. it was uh, Rami Malek, who I actually like. I mean, I think he's really good. Yeah. So I I you know I don't know. Like um, I like uh, I love I forgot his name. Peter Dinklage. My God, Peter Dinklage in a game would be awesome. I love his voice. He's been in a game already. They Has he? A, they did like a little Game of Thrones Telltale game. Oh, I never. Oh, you know, I do. I do remember the game. Yeah. Was it his voice and everything? It was. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I love that guy. He's a great actor. I like uh, Nicholas Costa, Walder Costa, whatever that guy's name is. The guy who played uh, the husband, Jamie Lannister. God, I, like I loved everybody in that show, all of them. Um, with the guy. You really need to make a Game of Thrones game. Well, there's like a mobile, there's a Game of Thrones mi mobile game, but yeah, the game itself would be awesome. Um, God, I like everybody in Star Wars universe. They would, when they've been in many games. Um, so yeah, I, you know, actor, actors. I mean, there are actors, like, uh, um, you know, probably the most talented actor I've ever seen is Sean Penn, because he can play anything. But I don't think he'd be very good in a video game. Um, you know, but I but I'm constantly impressed by the guy's range. Who paid CD Projekt Red? Um, I doubt Microsoft gave a shit. I think Microsoft said to CD CD Projekt, "We will feature your game on stage because we're CD Projekt going to do a big reveal. They could have a press conference, but more people are paying attention to the Microsoft press conference, and that's pretty standard fare to have a console non-exclusive like Grand Theft Auto." You know, which used to show up at the Sony press conference. Um, that's the kind of place you could do it. And you know, back to the question, did Sony blow it? I mean, that CD Projekt announcement would have been at the Sony press conference if they wanted it. So you know, I think that, and, and CD Projekt's going to sell more Cyberpunk on PlayStation than they are on Xbox. But somebody out there believes that this is an Xbox exclusive. 
because they saw it at the Xbox press conference. So Microsoft branded it, I'm sure they paid a little for that. Uh, but the point is that they gave CD Projekt a lot of free publicity by allowing Keanu to be there. And Keanu got paid to be in the game, so it's in his best interest to arrive you know, on the set and, and talk about the game, and it was pretty cool. Um, good question. Thank you for joining us on Factor Factor on Sifted.net. Uh, if you are a Patreon patron, we appreciate your patronage. Thank you. Keep it coming. If you're not and you're watching on YouTube, you're getting this a week late, least you can do is link your Prime account to your Twitch Prime account. The instructions are in the description for the show. It takes a minute. And then once you've done it once, it's a single click to re-up it. So follow the instructions and do it because it costs you nothing and we get $250 a month. I make nothing off of this. This is all just to keep Shane in gasoline. His car was stolen. His camera equipment was stolen. It's costing the guy money to show up and, and produce these shows. And that $250 is barely keeping him in macaroni and cheese and cornflakes. So please try to link your accounts. If you can't do either of those because you're not a Prime member and you have no money, Follow me on Twitter at Michael Pactor, follow Shane at Dinfire, follow Sifted at Sifted Games, and play Empires and Puzzles on your phone. Join my alliance, Achilles TM. We're going to be the best alliance in the world. Come on, we need you. Please join. And thank you very much for this week's Pactor Factor. See you next week. Final pitch. Um, I am addicted to a game called Empires and Puzzles. It's a iOS, I think, Android game as well. Um, it is not as popular in the West as it is in Russia, apparently, um, because it seems like my alliance, which is mostly Americans and Brits, we're just, we just love kicking Russian butt. So if you're really pissed off about how the Russians meddle in U.S. elections and you want to help us kick some Russian butt, uh, start playing Empires and Puzzles, and you, you'll understand what this means when you do it. When you get up to 400 trophies, you can join my alliance. We still have 12 openings. Achilles TM, like trademark. Uh, join my alliance, and uh, we will be nice to you. We will help you figure out the game. You will get good at the game in, in a matter of a couple of months because our alliance is pretty tough, and we're good people. So again, play Empires and Puzzles. Tweet about it. Show me screenshots of your highest global ranking. I got to, uh, I think, number 23 in the world. I think that's where I was. Something like that last week. And, of course, got shot down to, like, number 109,000 two days later. Um, but I'm going to be number one in the world, and I'm going to tweet that out. So follow me on Twitter. You can track my progress in Empires and Puzzles.